Gene Torex. Again, I welcome you. I welcome you to our worship. Um, this is also the Sunday after Ascension. Uh, if you think about the journey of Jesus, uh, Thursday was 40 days after Easter. Next Sunday is the 50 days after Easter, which is when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. The reading today from John uh, is one that's all has been close to my heart. Uh, I invite you to stand with me and share together in the call to worship in our bulletin, followed by our hymn, Thou True Vine. Why do you look upward? Our Lord has been taken away into heaven. Look around you. What do you see? There are so many places where the love of God is needed. Look beyond you. Where will you go? Christ calls us into a world, bringing God's healing love to all. Amen. We can turn, Thou True Vine that heals the nations. It's number 373. As we come before you today, we are thankful. Thankful for this land and the freedoms we enjoy. We are thankful for those who have served, who are serving, and, and for those who died in service to our land. We pray, O oh God, that you would bring this freedom to the hearts of all people, to the lives of all people. We also thank you for the love of Jesus that draws us together, binds us together, that yearns for us to become, to become one, one kinship of children serving, honoring, and obeying you. We pray, O oh God, for your presence to be among us, that you would help us to have the courage and the joy that we might be witnesses to your eternal love, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. First reading this morning is from, from the end, the end of the Bible, from Revelation chapter 22. Starting in verse 12. 
These are, yeah, the words of Jesus. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Story Time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this seems like a special be uh, weekend or whatever. Uh, we don't have any sparklers or whatever, but at least we had players and stuff out on Spring Street this morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we had a water break. But anyway, uh, uh, what's special about tomorrow? Memorial Day? You know what Memorial Day is for? Yes? Okay. Indirectly, uh, the men and women who have died during the world's wars or whatever that was fighting for our freedom, uh, it's a day that we can honor them. And they usually go and uh, put flags and stuff on their graves and stuff because they fought and gave their lives for, uh, for our freedom. Now, you might want to ask the question, what is freedom? Freedom is to make the choice. Each of us has our own uh, opportunity to make our decisions and stuff or whatever. And we choose what we want to do, whether to do something or not. And... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, indirectly back in the olden times or whatever, they had kings and dictators and stuff or whatever, and you weren't allowed to make decisions or choose anything because they told us what to do. And uh, if we didn't like it, then we were in trouble. So, uh, uh, but indirectly, it's, it's uh, freedom is, is the, uh, freedom is also uh, the opportunity to choose a church and we can go and worship God as we please, and we can't, we don't get in trouble for it, because that's what the, uh, the dictators and stuff want. They wanted to have full control of us or whatever. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and we can voice our opinions and disagree with different people if we want to. That's our right. And uh, freedom also gives us the right to marry whoever we choose, uh, where we live. Uh, what we choose to make a living at, and what what kind of a car we can drive to. Or like a farmer or whatever, what type of uh, uh, tractor we have, whether it's a red tractor or a green one. <laughs> okay, America's not perfect, but it could be a lot worse. Uh, and along with Memorial Day, uh, we also celebrate uh, the fact that uh, we as parents or whatever, or anybody can go on Memorial Day, we go and we put flowers on the graves. That's sort of a tradition also of loved ones who have passed on. Uh, it can be a grandmother, a grandfather, a father, a mother, a child, or just a friend. And uh, so this is indirectly, Memorial Day is tomorrow, but it's also a time that we can uh, remember our loved ones also. So indirectly, this is my story for this morning. Now, I do have something to offer you, though. <clears throat> uh, I put flowers on our graves, and I got away too many flowers. So indirectly, I brought flowers this morning for anybody that wants to take a flower home to remember somebody, or if you aren't a green thumb or whatever, you can plant them in the garden. You don't have to water them. <laughs> it's taken care of. So I'll get my choice out here. <laughs> 
I got a few to choose from. <laughs> so indirectly, the kids can take one and take home if they want to. Uh, <clears throat> and they're all different kinds. And after church is over, if there's some left over, you can come up and help yourself also. <laughs> I would invite us for just a few moments of silence to, to, to remember, to remember those who have gone before us. Oh Lord, as the faces and the voices and the lives of those who have flashed through our memories, as they flash through, oh Lord, we pray that you would help us to remember your faithfulness through them, through the ways they've loved us, through the ways they've touched our lives, and through the ways they've served you and reflected your glory to this world, to the world that they lived in. And we, we thank you, O oh God, for the way you are revealed in those memories of your faithful ones. We, we pray, O oh God, for our land and, and for this nation. We remember, the, we remember the, those who are grieving. Remember those who are grieving in Buffalo, those who are, are grieving in Uvalde, and in many, many other places. We pray for your healing on our land. We hear and think, imagine that tree of life that is for the healing of the nations. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit could, could bring that healing even now. Healing to the places that are at war, lifting up Ukraine and, and other places asking for your peace to come. 
We also pray for your peace to come into our own hearts and lives. You would help us to hear your word in new ways, ways that we might be willing to, to follow you, better able to follow and obey and, and fulfill your perfect will for us, one moment and one life and one interaction at a time. God, we pray. We pray, thanking you for the healing that Kathy's experienced, thanking you for the healing and the effect that the treatments have had for Charlie, and, and praying that these medicines, these treatments would continue to help their bodies fight off cancer. And we thank you for all those who are among us who've survived cancer. So thankful, thankful for those answered prayers. We also remember a, a, a little one, a preemie that, from the Wareham family that was born this week, just at 34 weeks old. We pray that you would protect this little tiny life of under four pounds and help it to grow and mature and, and to be well. We thank you for answered prayer for Joe. And we're so thankful he's home. The blockages have been opened and we pray that he would feel feel stronger day by day. We pray also and thank you for Juanita. Thank you for those who cared for her and we're so thankful her arm is well today. We pray also remembering little Carson who broke his wrist at school this week. We pray that your healing would be upon Carson Feaster and his family. We pray Again, that you would help us to hear your voice speaking through your word and that you would help us to be responsive, to respond with faithfulness and yearning for the connection we have with you. That we would be more and more in tune with you and through prayer, through worship, through our devotional lives. Help us, O oh Lord, to have fellowship with you now and always, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Gospel reading, again, I shared, is from John chapter 17. This is sometimes referred to as Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's at the end of this discourse that, that goes from chapter 13 through chapter 17. And in this whole chapter is, is prayer. Jesus praying for his disciples first. And then we get to verse 20 where we'll start today. He's praying for those who will believe through their witness, through their testimony. Hear these words from the prayer of Jesus. <clears throat> I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe through their, in me, those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you've sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you've given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know you, I'm sorry, these know that you have sent me I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. 
May the word of God come alive in our hearts today. This, again, I've, as I've shared, has been kind of a special text for me. It's kind of interesting that it falls in the lectionary readings for today. I, I actually remember the first time I spoke on this text was um, July 31st, 1995 at Kingston Waterside Churches. It was my trial sermon. Oh my goodness, I was nervous and I was green and somehow they thought this farmer could be a minister and then I, that's, ooh, anyway. This text, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure if the text is special to me because I'm kind of inclined to, to be the peacemaker. You know, I'm kind of inclined to see the Lord bringing things together, or if I kind of see the Lord bringing things together because of some of these texts. But this is one of those very special ones for me. Jesus is, is praying for those who will believe through the testimony of the disciples who are sitting around him there in the upper room. It's like a window into the heart of Jesus. And you know, we as brethren, whenever we see a window into the heart of Jesus, we see a window into the heart of God. This is the heart of God for, for us, for people, for believers. So it's been an interesting week, you know, and as I come to speak each week, it, it, it seems like I, I try to kind of hold some of the things that have happened through the week, some of the ideas and the things, experiences, in light of the word, think about how to share. One of the ideas I came upon this week is the sense that and this is from another little book called The Cloud of Unknowing. I read this phrase, and, and you know, it just struck me that there is a sense to which we as Christians seek to follow the will of God, right? Amen? We seek to follow the will of God. But in this phrase, it, it was said, it said something about we need to be careful introducing this, this way of con Praying in silence, praying with silence and, and in the spirit for those who desire or are committed to follow the will of Jesus, the will of Christ, perfectly. And that perfectly, in my mind, made all the difference. It struck me. We all want to follow the will of Christ, right? Well, I started to think of some of those tough scriptures, like the Sermon on the Mount, you know, like, like the rich young ruler. I started thinking about some of the texts that, that are hard to follow. And that's where I, that's kind of where I got in trouble, you know. At least another story, another idea I came upon is from Lisa Cressman. She tells this little pithy proverb, and if this were probably from any other source, I probably would have disregarded it, but because I respect her, she's an Anglican priest who is married to a Mennonite guy. That, that Mennonite influence is what... She said, there's a student, there's a student who goes to his teacher, and he says, I have gone through the scriptures, and I've even memorized them. What do I do next? And the teacher says, hmm, so you have gone through the scriptures. Have you allowed the scriptures to go through you? You see, sometimes we come to the scriptures, and I'm confessing here, we come to it this way. We do this as a land, as a nation. Some of us have bookmarks on the scriptures that we really want others to be aware of, and we point them. You need to see this, or this, or maybe this, maybe this here. You, you, you need this. 
Some of us who are more conservative have one set of bookmarks, and some of us who are more progressive have a different set of bookmarks. But we have our passages, like I have John 17, like that's one of mine. It's bookmarked, and I want you to know it. But whenever I start to think about the scriptures going through me, I realize that this isn't the way for me to learn the scriptures. How am I going to learn what it says if I'm only worried about your reaction to it and the way that your reaction differs from mine? So the first part of John 17, of becoming one, is turning the Bible around and hearing it, listening to it for ourselves instead of on behalf of others. What does it mean for me? This is my wrestling. What does it mean for that prayer that they may all be one to go through me? To become a part of who I am. To become a part of how I look at those who see things differently from me. Second, second idea again, I, I mentioned the cloud of unknowing. It was about the commitment to follow Christ perfectly. I think among Christians, even for myself, that might be the exception instead of the rule. And yet it's God's hope for all of us. The author goes on to say in another chapter that what if I can come, what if we can come to prayer, come before God with this sense of, of pure, pure centering our attention on our desire to be connected with God, allowing this to be the sole concern of our hearts and minds, just to be still, and to know God, not without it, with just disregard for everything else. To have a purity of centering our attention and our desire on God, allowing this to be the sole concern of our hearts and minds. Anna Butler Bass is the third idea I came upon. She, she talks about this passage and about the idea of kinship, about the way Jesus might have looked at the world through the eyes of our kinship with God. You know, every one of us is a child of God. Every one of us. Every one of us, regardless of our color, regardless of our economic status, regardless of our nationality. Every one of us is a child of God. And if we begin to hear and allow this scripture to pass through us, we begin to realize that we have so much more in common than we have at odds with each other. It's like a lens. It's like switching glasses. It's like seeing the fact that we all want to be free. We all want to have homes. We all want to be free to have families, to be able to pick our careers. We all want to have those blessings. The things that separate us, like skin color, or even where we live, what all those things are nothing compared to all we share in common. I remember years ago, we sang a cantata at Greece praying, and this line, I don't get the line quite right, but it was something like, every father cries when he walks his daughter down the aisle, right? It's universal. We have so many of those universal experiences, but we allow other things to overshadow them.
being one is about our kinship. We all are created by God in the image of God. We all, we all have the same needs. We all have the same dreams. We all have the same in so many ways. And for John chapter 17, this prayer to flow through us, so we're going to be more and more willing to look at this through the lens and the love and the heart of Jesus. So I want to invite you to turn your Bibles around. I want to invite you to hold in prayer those who see the world differently than you. I want to invite you to hold in prayer the people of Uvalde, people who have experienced these, ter these terrible tragedies. And I want to invite you to hold in prayer the lost younger generation that could be next. Where could the next experience happen? Where could the next tragedy happen? May we hold them in prayer. Help us, help us, oh God. Help our, our land to overcome this, these tragedies. Help us, oh God, to be filled with the love of Jesus that shines into the darkness of empty hearts, that shines into the darkness of, of grief, that shines into the hearts of those who might be violent. Help us, O oh Lord, to allow your word and the heart of Jesus and these very words, help them to flow through us, to change us and to make us more and more like you, O oh God, O oh Lord Jesus. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you, there is a prayer. I want to invite you to join me for a prayer of confession in unison from, from our bulletin. Lord, we are what's next people. We want to know what we are supposed to do. We journeyed through the Lenten season, stood at the foot of the cross, witnessed Jesus' resurrection and his appearances to the disciples in the upper room and on the lake shore. Now we hear your desire that we may all be one. That's hard for us to do. We often want to go out on our own, we often focus on our differences and disagreements. Calm our hearts and help us to put others first with the help of your spirit. Forgive and heal our divisions and disunity. We place our trust in your redeeming love. Amen. From John 17, Jesus' words. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I and them, and you and me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. I invite you to sing with me now, uh, out of order here in the bulletin, but it's number 323, Beyond a Dying Sun. If you're comfortable, I invite you to stand.
peace of the Lord go with us and keep us. Bless us forevermore. Amen.